It's time to pick some all-star game participants. And a certain team currently has the best record in the National League. Miller Thomas of Locked On Diamondbacks is here to try to figure out which team that could possibly be. This is a Locked On MLB, Locked On Diamondbacks crossover. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, Locked On Diamondbacks crossover. This is a weekly crossover where we talk about all the Major League Baseball and uh, see what's happening down in the desert. It's uh, not as bleak as you may have thought it would have been uh-uh. at the beginning of the year. That's not a sentence. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me <laughs> Sully. And right over there is my co-host for the day. Miller Thomas, host of the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast, where it's always sunny in Arizona when you're locked on Diamondbacks, when you're a D-backs fan. Follow me on Twitter at CareerThomas24 for my personal account, or look up Locked on Diamondbacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle. And of course, please hit subscribe on the Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel. And follow us at Locked on MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Uh, you and I are going to talk a little bit about uh, some of our all-star game picks, uh, I maintain, and I'm going to just make this copy, I bring this up all the time, and I'm, I've never been proven wrong about this. I think the season should begin with the all-star game. Mm. I think that's a way to start the year, start the year with all the stars, and the start the year with a big event, a uh, big celebration of baseball to kick off the season. The other reason why I think we start the season with the all-star game is that you can use the entire season's worth of stats. The way the All-Star game is set up now, it penalizes players for having a terrific second half. If you have a great first half, you're probably going to get a lot of All-Star game votes. If you have a good first half, but a dynamite second half, well, that's not going to help you get into an All-Star game. That's why Kirk Gibson won a National League Most Valuable Player, but I am tied with him in All-Star game appearances. Zero. And you've had instances like there was a year Jake Arrieta down the stretch basically pitched the Cubs into the playoffs and won himself the Cy Young Award. And nobody argued that Cy Young Award. Yet here's the deal. He didn't make the all-star team that year because he had a good first half, but he had a dynamic second half. So I think if you have the the all-star game to start the season, you have the whole year's worth of stats. To, to pluck from and it also gives you arguments and things like that to have over the off season to compare this player to that player so uh, that we're basing, being, so, we're that? Basing it, so we're basing it off the previous season yeah if you start it's, the year you're not going to base it on spring training okay so these guys are coming out the off season you know maybe they had surgery maybe they're not starting the season but yeah we're gonna have the all-star game it just yeah, feels well, like it, it just feels also, so we also vote in players with no business being in the all-star game as well yeah, but you're going to be like, remember that guy's season from four months ago? He deserves to be an all-star right now. Like, yeah, he does. Uh, he has the stars from the previous year coming in to start the season. Maybe if you want to do it at the end of the season, but it, it would feel the a little weird. end of the season, weird. we have the playoffs. Okay, but, I, but we do the Pro Bowl in football a week before the Super Bowl, right? You and have a that grand total of zero people care about it. Okay, I don't know how many people care about the MLB all-star game Because right now of the way season. it's set up. Okay. You start I don't the year with all the big stars coming together. I don't know if we would have more interest if we take the whole summer off and it's like, hey, let's play the All Star game now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm. You disagree? No, okay. I, no. There you go. Well, look at it. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. Now, um, I did something. I am not someone who uses war as an end all be all, mm-hmm. but I did use it for a tool when I did my All Star game votes because I went to Fangrass. Oh, and I yeah. put I put in instead of like this season, I said the last calendar year. So mm. from this point to today, this point last year to today. So I basically did my best to make my basis on who's on my all star team on their previous 162 games. Interesting. OK, because if you had a good second half last year, that shouldn't penalize you. That shouldn't take away, or that should be a reward 
isn't playing well down the stretch something that we want to reward instead of penalize? And so, um, and I put together my my starting uh, nine plus my starting pitcher. Now, I will also say there's a couple of times that I lean towards star power. Do you know why? It's the why? freaking all-star game. Mm. And people want to see stars in an all-star game. Um, but anyway, I have my starting nine plus my starting pitcher for both the NL and the AL uh, using a combination of the, their top fan graph war from the past 100 for the, from the past uh, calendar year plus my desire to see some stars pl- shine on the big stage so that's what I did and what do you have for us uh well the way I did it I just kind of you know went on good old MLB all-star voting I was like let me just filter it by good old OPS who's on the good teams who's got the good stats I was like I'm gonna pick my players just like that uh you could have done the big deep dive on here but I did try to keep it to just this season Sully Baseball I know you're trying to pull in last year and you're trying to get stats from the World Series a decade ago but I'm gonna just try to keep it from this season not fair I'm just basing basing it on the quality player for the from the past calendar year. So anyway, uh, but it would be interesting to see. I bet you and I are going to come up with a lot of the same names. Yeah, that's probably okay, true. Gonna, you know, I bet we're going to come up with a lot of the same names. Um, so one, let's uh, let's go through. Let's we're going to do which one do you want to do? National League or American League first? You know, I'm an NL baseball guy, but I believe in saving the best for last. So let's start with American League action. Okay, um, catcher. I have Jonah Heim of Texas. Okay, I don't mind that. Honestly, I when doing this, I I don't want to spoil too much, but big Texas ballot come down for me. But for me, it came down when I look at that American League catcher between Adley Rushman and Salvador Perez. I felt like they mm-hmm. had the two best seasons. I'm going with the slight edge of Salvador Perez. If you want to give it to Rushman because he's on the, on the better team, he's being you know more of a contributor to winning. Sure, but Perez, I just think is a slightly better catcher, old reliable. I'm going down with Salvador Perez. I have no I have no issue with any of those. They were they were definitely in my consideration as well. Uh, for my first base. Uh, I had to make sure someone from Tampa Bay was on mm-hmm. this roster starting. Uh, so I have Yandy Diaz at first base. I also have Yandy Diaz. Looking at first base for the American League, not the strongest field right now. A guy like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. not having a great season. Mm-hmm. Something like Ryan Nodder from the Oakland A's can make a case for as being the starter for first base. Kind of a weak field this year in the American yeah. League. Yeah, especially compared to the National League, which is a lot tougher. Oh, yeah. Um, a little preview right there. Um, second base, I have Marcus Simeon from the Texas Rangers. I do as well. Um, it's another one where it's like the, the field for some of these positions are weaker than some of the other positions. American mm-hmm. League second base is another one. You can make Altuve a case and he's only played like 15 games. Brandon Drury has a case as well for the Angels, which is kind of crazy. Like second base for the American League is another weak one. And Marcus Simeon is just by far having the best season, I think, of all second base players in the American League. That Texas Rangers offense is humming. and He's a big reason why. Um, shortstop. It was interesting. It's not who I kind of thought I was. I kicked around a bunch of names, um, but the one I'm going with is Bo Bichette of mm-hmm. Toronto. Bo Bichette is very good. Shortstop in the American League is a tough one. You got Bo Bichette. You got Wander Franco. But like mm-hmm. I said, this is a Texas Rangers heavy bout for me. He's played slightly fewer games than some of these other guys, but he's having a fantastic season. Corey Seager, over a thousand OPS, got insane yeah. batting average. It just I'm going with him, even though he's might have uh, maybe he has a, a slightly smaller sample size than the other guys. But I think he's been so good in the games he's played. I'm so going. With you're him. going with Seager, right? Mm-hmm. Seager. Yeah, to me, it, 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 it to me it was a borderline coin toss between Seager and Bichette. Yeah, it um, is. I I think it, I would have no quarrel with either one of them right now. Uh, third base, it came down. This came there was a couple of names that came down for me, and I chose Jose Ramirez. Uh, because he's been super hot down the stretch, and I want to see a big hot bat in there. Uh, there was a couple – Bregman was there for me. There's a couple that was in there for me, but I lean towards Jose Ramirez. Yeah, third base is a tougher position in the American League. You got Ramirez. You got Paredes of the Rays, Matt yeah. Chapman. Devers, Devers, not having, Devers yeah. and Chapman you know, as well, yeah. Yeah, Devers probably having a little bit of a down season by his metrics, mm-hmm. but he's still an incredible RBI producer, power threat. But like I said, I'm keeping it Rangers heavy, and because their offense has been so elite, I'm going with a rookie, Josh Jung, and I got three Rangers. Bryce Patrick is going to be very happy with 
Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, and Josh Young. I basically got the whole infield on my roster. To me, it came down to Chapman and Ramirez. Hmm. And uh, I lean towards Ramirez for personal reasons. It's my vote. So, so sue me. Yeah. Um, I have a star-studded outfield. Okay. Uh, let's start with left field, or I have Jordan Alvarez of Houston. I want to see that bat. I want to see that upper deck power. Yeah, I hope it would be star studded. This is the All Star game. Uh, Jordan Alvarez, you know, on the injured list right now, but with the season he's had, I'm putting him in my left field as well. Jordan Alvarez. I mean, at this point last year, it was him or Aaron Judge as the MVP of the first half. Of course, Aaron Judge pulled away in the second half, but Jordan Alvarez. You look at his last 160, uh, last 180 games for Alvarez. He's had a fantastic last 15 months of, ma of major league baseball so i don't feel bad at all putting him in my left field uh center field it's star star power uh and he you know he may not be having his best season but i want to see mike trout in that lineup oh okay you're going with old reliable i mean you can never be mad at going with mike trout because he's a stud i'm going with another tampa bay ray Randy Arazarina, who's having a fantastic season, RBIs, home runs, got the OPS, got speed, got defense, a really charismatic and fun player as well. Mm -hmm. Just a, one of those exciting players. So I'm putting him on my all-star ballot. We'll probably add a little bit more charisma than a Mike Trout in my all-star outfield. Um, also, just so you know, uh, with Alvarez injured, I would have Arazarina take his spot in okay. the lineup. Um, um, and um, for right field, Mm -hmm. um, I'm going Jackie Bradley Jr. Oh, oh I'm totally okay. joking. I'm going yeah. Aaron Judge. Of course I'm going Aaron Judge. Yeah. Aaron yeah. Judge is the best position player in Major League Baseball. Right? And you see, if, and granted, he's injured right now. Um, you see when he remove him from the Yankee lineup, they go from being a fearsome lineup to being a very weak lineup without him. I mean, his, the, it's not just the fact that he puts up unbelievable numbers, but the effect he, the ripple effect that he has on the rest of the lineup is staggering. Yeah. He feels like the most valuable non -o, non -o, Otani. I don't know why I can say his name, non Otani player in major league baseball. Cause like you just said, the gravity he, uh, pulls like uh, maybe since Barry Bonds, I don't know, maybe that's too hyperbolic, but is there another fearsome guy they've had go up to the plate since Barry Bonds in Aaron judge? Or well, I don't think I can think of, it may be uh, look at I have I'm never I'm gonna be really really uh hesitant to compare anyone to bonds in terms of just raw say, power but what but what I will compare him to bonds is when you remove bonds from the Giants lineup or the Pirates lineup for that matter the effect it had on the rest of the players was staggering mm -hmm. and I can't think of another another single player who had that kind of an impact that put him in the lineup in their pennant contender, take him out of the lineup and they look like a split squad spring training game team. And uh, that's, that's amazing for judge. Uh, my DH, I have Otani. I have to have Otani in this team. I got to have Otani on the team. Yeah, it has to be Otani. And we look at true DHs when we do this on the all-star ballot. Otani is a true DH. He doesn't, I don't know if he ever plays the field. So, yeah, Otani, easy answer. And he's like quite literally, if you just took away his pitching stats and just put up his uh, position player stats, one of the best in Major League Baseball, probably the best Angels position player in that lineup, even ahead of Mike Trout with the season he's had. So, Otani, easy answer for you, DH. And my starting pitcher, I mean, I guess we're supposed to say Otani. Um, and I would have, And I would have no trouble starting Otani. Although I think Nathan Ovaldi would be the one I would pick of the current crop of American League pitchers. Mm, okay, I don't mind Nathan Ovaldi. Otani, just the most fun guy they could throw yeah. out there just because he's the guy everyone wants to see. I'm yeah. going with a ho-hum answer. Maybe the guy who's having the best season, Shane mm -hmm. McClanahan. He leads the American League in ERA, has Absolutely. nine wins, double-digit strikeouts for nine. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's obviously an all-star, and, and he was yeah. one of the ones I considered. We'll he's tell you what. Sexy. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the National League All Stars. Mm -hmm. But first, hey, look at I'm I had to uh, I'm going on a big trip in a couple of days. Oh, and I'm going to be driving my car up from the from Pasadena up to San Francisco in a few days. So uh, is. If I had car issues, do you have any recommendations for who I should talk to? Yeah, you want to make sure all your parts are up to date because if they're not, you're going to want to check out eBay Motors because for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need 
fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hey, before we continue, I before we continue, I want to bring up the trivia question. Uh, we got a bunch of people who got the trivia question correct, but the first person to get it right was Jordan, whose Twitter handle is lazy underscore s underscore cowboy the trivia question was who is the only reds manager to win the national league manager of the year and the answer is jack mckeon with the 1999 reds jack mckeon it wasn't lou Pinella who led him to the world series it wasn't davy johnson led him to the national league championship series it wasn't Pete Rose who bet on the Reds, and it wasn't Dusty Baker who took him to the postseason. Nope, it was Jack McKeon who brought an unlikely Reds team to a one-game playoff with the Mets in 1999. And so that's the answer to that question. All right, uh, speaking of the National League, let's go over our National League All-Star picks. Uh, why don't you start off with catcher? All right, with catcher, I got... At the time in the offseason, I said this trade might be a little bit overrated, but I have to rescind that statement because I think he's been the best catcher in the NL this year. Sean Murphy of the Atlanta Mm -hmm. Braves has been elite defensively behind the plate. Offensively, he's been a key cog in that lineup. I'm going with him as my catcher. I think that's the biggest no-brainer, quite frankly, of these these picks. Mm. Um, I think, I mean, if Wilson Contreras was having a better year with the Cubs, I would with St. Louis. I'm sorry. If he was a player with St. Louis that he was with the Cubs, um, I would have included him. But based upon last year and this year, it's, it's got to be Sean Murphy. It has to be I mean, Sean Murphy. I mean, if you're looking at the catchers just based off this season, Will Smith has had a pretty good year. Even the rookie yes. for the Mets, Francisco Alvarez, and also the catcher for uh, the Rockies. He's been probably – him and McMahon have been quietly producing in that lineup. I just think Murphy's the best at this point. Yeah. At this point, he would do it. Okay, now this is probably the most stacked position coming up is first base. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm curious to see who you had getting the spot there. Yeah, first base, there's some good contenders, but I do think the answer is kind of obvious because I think Freddie Freeman is levitating amongst the rest of the crew. Pete Alonzo, he's, of course, 20-plus home runs, but he just went on the injured list. Goldie's always going to be around. He's old reliable. I mean, there's a ton of first basemen having great seasons, but I think Freddie Freeman's having like an MVP-type season, so I have to pick him. I agree. I, yeah, Freddie Freeman was my pick. Um, second base, I, I to me... It, it's he, he, I I my pick was pretty clear. Who do you have at second base? Second base is kind of weird this year. Um, you got I, Nolan Gorman and Thyro Estradas, but I'm going with the man who's batted near 400 the entire season. I want to put yep. low respect on his name, Arias of the Miami Marlins. Luis Arias, yeah, uh, it's Arise, funny because he's a second baseman, yeah. kind of like it's like this is a fantasy team, like he because he doesn't really have the one position that he's nailed down to. Um, you know, if you took this year and last year's war, you know, for the, for the last calendar year, it probably would have been Jeff McNeil Mm. of the Mets. But if you're batting nearly 400 and his addition to that lineup has turned them from being an okay team with good pitching to a legitimate wildcard contender. And, you know, right now they would be a wildcard team. And I think no small part of that is, you know, it's not the exact same effect the judge has, but by putting that that solid professional hitter in that lineup, it's it's caused a chain reaction where you know the Solaires and everyone else in, on that in that lineup are hitting the ball well and they're scoring enough for the you know the Mar- we knew the Marlins were going to pitch well, mm-hmm. so now they can hit and he is having arguably an MVP season. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be it. I mean, uh, my pick for the MVP at this point is a little bit later uh, in my in my 
NL picks, but Arise would be second for me right now. You know, Freeman, I mean, Freeman, Arise, and the other person would probably be my top three at this moment. I'll, be, you may hmm. be able to guess who the third person is and who my leader is. But um, anyway, I'll tell you the single weakest position yeah. of any of the you know, AL or NL All-Star starters is National League shortstop. Yeah, it's kind of gross. I wasn't even entirely sure who to pick here. I kind of felt bad picking for anyone, but I'm going to lean into the homerism a little bit, and I feel like it's justified with the season he's had compared to the other guys on this list. I'm going with Gerardo Perdomo, who's been a key contributor mm-hmm. to this D-backs team, who's been elite with runners in scoring position. There may not be a D-back I trust more at the plate if there's two outs and two runners on than Gerardo Perdomo. He's got as many RBIs. I, I think he's got more RBIs than every shortstop on this list outside of Francisco Lindor. He's been a key contributor, over 800 OPS. I'm going with Perdomo as my starting shortstop, and I never thought I would have said that in a million years. That's I considered him. Yeah. I absolutely considered him. Now, if let me put it this way. If Francisco Lindor was having an okay first half, mm-hmm. he would it get is. it for me. Yeah, But he's it's not good. having an okay first half. He's having a subpar first half. And so the only reason I'm putting Dansby Swanson as the starter is based upon he's been mediocre – this first half, and he was very good at the second half last year. I mean, this is where combining the two put him slightly over the top. And I also believe that Swanson will, when the dust settles at the end of the year, I think he'll probably put up decent stats and be, you know, not look insane that I picked him. But again, there was no player on any of the teams that stood out as, you know, I couldn't do O'Neill Cruz yet. He's not there yet. No. You know, I mean, there was a couple I thought I kind of squinted my eyes and I'm like, no, I just can't do it. So um, because I can't have a hole at shortstop, otherwise there'd be lots of ground balls right through to the outfield. Um, I decided to go Swanson. Yeah, you could have went with like a big name like Bogart or Trey Turner, but none of them have been. They, they, they don't deserve it. They don't yeah, deserve it. They don't it deserve it. Sense. You know, I, I mean, I was I really was. I mean, Trey Turner has been was terrible for a while and Bogarts has been subpar and injured. Trust me, I love both of those players. And I'm like, I can't, I couldn't pull the trigger. So I just pulled the trigger on Swanson. Been weak. Um, okay, third base, who you got? Third base, um, that was another weird one for uh, this season. Mm-hmm. I'm going with Nolan Arenado, but I don't think he's had like a Nolan Arenado type season. I just think the field is kind of weird. Like you could go with J.D. Davis here of the Giants. You could even go with like a Ryan McMahon, like I said, the Colorado Rockies. But I'm going with Nolan Arenado just because he's older live. I know he's going to play great defense for me, and he's a true star, so I'm putting him over at the hot corner. And I'm putting or- Arenado in there because he was my pick for the MVP last year. Okay. And there is no surefire – other pick there no. so this is a combination of the second half of last year where i thought he was elite in fact i would have picked arenado over over um and you know it would it was if machado was having a slightly better first half i would have gone machado for the same reason because machado was in my top three of mvp candidates last year so again this is a little bit of w- waiting the second half they had last year Again, I don't think anyone would throw a pie in my face when I put Nolan Arenado on my all-star ballot. Um, you know, I, I'm one of the few Manny Machado fans in the world, um, but so I wanted to vote for him. I just couldn't because he's not he's he's been he hasn't bad. been on the field enough. He's been bad too. He just hasn't yeah. performed at all this year. Although he made that amazing catch the other day, who knows? He may have yeah. a phenomenal second half. But I, he, Arenado is my pick. All right, I need to know your left fielder. Oh, you already know my left fielder because if I didn't pick this guy, I would have had another D back on the list. And left field is going to Corbin Carroll. If it wasn't Corbin Carroll, it should have been Lords Goriel. But Corbin Carroll, if you filter by any offensive metric, he's going to be near at the top of those lists. We had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. Could he be the third player to win Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same season? You gave me a quick, fast no. He was plus 20,000 at that time on FanDuel. I think he's like plus 9,000 and climbing the conversation. Conversation getting real. He's almost caught Acuna in all of his stats when Acuna has been the favorite for the MVP all season. I'm locking in Corbin Carroll as my left fielder for the All Star game and watch out, still get the money in while it's early on him to potentially win MVP. You're going to be mad at me. Oh, man. 
my left field pick. Right oh, there. Man. Who do you think? Uh, it better be Corbin Carroll. Of course it's Corbin Carroll. Okay, there we go. Of course it's Corbin Carroll. Okay, Carroll. Corbin Carroll. Yes. Okay. All right, yeah. That, that, that was a no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I, I saw you starting to sweat there. Yes, absolutely it's Corbin yeah. Carroll. Um, center field, I have Acuna. Yeah, me too. And Acuna think... is currently my NL MVP. Mm-hmm. Now, again, Carroll, Freeman, Arise, all are in the mix right now. But yeah. if the leader in the clubhouse for me is Acuna, uh, and I think that he's just, he's a remarkable, he, on all facets of the game, he's a remarkable player. I think he's having a fine season, and uh, he definitely belongs in the uh, in the All-Star game. Yeah, I agree on everything you said. Hopefully Acuna can stay healthy the entire season, because that's been like the biggest <laughs> issue from the last few years. And the game is more fun with, with Acuna healthy playing. Yeah, he's electric. Um, yeah. Uh, right field, I have Mookie Betts. Um, yeah. now I just, as, as someone who grew up a diehard Red Sox fan, I am just so glad the Red Sox were able to save money on the, uh, on their taxes <laughs> because uh, I'd hate to see a billionaire, uh, pay money. It's worth a generational talent being traded away. Uh, Mookie Betts and you know what? He could have been the starting shortstop because he started a couple of days at shortstop, you know, but why not, why not throw Mookie Betts in there? But, uh, yeah, he's in there for me. And honestly, if Major League Baseball was like, let's put Mookie Betts, give him some infield eligibility on this ballot to strengthen that position, I wouldn't be mad at them. I don't want to do that. And then you no. have a guy like Lords Gurry on the other outfield spot, and then you got all the best players in the National League in the game. Um, I think it's going to be even more sad for Red Sox fans when you look at who could be the DH potentially, because I got JD Martinez as my starting DH in the National League. Yeah, well, Arizona Diamondback fans won't be happy that I have Paul Goldschmidt. As my oh. DH, but um, yeah, I mean, but again, JD is also a former Diamondback. Yeah. Um, I, I'm fine with JD. I'm fine with Goldschmidt. I want to see Goldschmidt in that lineup. Uh, but JD has been unbelievable with Los Angeles this year. Yeah, uh, I just know what a true DH because I don't even know if you could pick a guy like Goldschmidt on just like the ballot that MLB has set up. Well, okay, well if that's the case, then it'd be JD. Yeah. Um, okay, do. who do you yeah. who do you have starting? What pitch and then start? starting, I mean, if he didn't give up five earned runs against the Detroit Tigers on Sunday, I really would have went with Zach Gallon here. But now his ERA is like above a three. So I think I'm going to have to go with um, not a guy who I would have expected entering the year. But I'm going with Marcus Stroman, who's having like a bit of a yeah. renaissance season for the Chicago Cubs after struggling the last couple of years. Absolutely. It's Stroman. I mean, Stroman yeah. right now has got to be the front runner for the NL Cy Young Award. Which is gross. I mean, I'm just I'm not saying. You're right. I'm though. just saying. I'm just saying. You're well, cool. there you go. That's those are look at we use different criteria to pick our ballots, and yet with only one or two exceptions here or there, and they're usually at the at the positions where there's a coin toss. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had the same catches, same first base, same second base, different shortstop, different third, same outfield, same starting pitcher, and I think we had the same uh outfield almost the same outfield we only like what we only like three or four differences in the in the entire thing yeah it felt like a lot of the dudes were it just felt like you knew who the starting starters were in the outfield or not the outfield in the all-star ballot just felt like at a lot of the positions it was just a clear-cut guy who should be taking over this year all right we are here with miller thomas doing a last run through of the uh you know the sunday games were unbelievable because you got some wild, weird comebacks. First of all, uh, shout out to uh, Keller and the Pirates, who dust themselves off from the Saturday loss. They doubled up the Mets 2-1. to one, And the Pirates are now in first place by themselves because the hottest team in the American League is the Oakland A's. Man. They've won their last five games, and it's a wonderful thing. I'll tell you why it's a wonderful thing. Because people have just circled the A's. As on their calendar as well. Here's some easy wins. Here's some easy wins. The Pirates thought they had some easy wins. They lost their series. The A's came into Milwaukee and swept the Brewers in Milwaukee. Um, and you know today was just a weird, sloppy game. Final score was eight to six. There was a um, Seth Brown. I think he may still be fouling off pitches. He kept fouling and fouling and fouling, and then wound up hitting a three-run home run, and that was the difference. Uh, Some more comebacks. The Reds came back against the Cardinals. The Cardinals are absolutely sputtering. The Cardinals might be sellers at the trade deadline. Um, One of the most, to me, one of the most startling comebacks today 
uh, came between the, the White Sox and the Marlins. The White Sox took a 5-1 to one lead into the eighth, and Soler and company came storming back with a three-run ninth inning. And this is coming off after Friday. They had a five-run ninth inning. The White Sox should have swept this series. Instead, they dropped two out of three at home, and the Marlins are have are holding on to their uh, wild card spot, and they have crawled to within – um, four games in the loss column behind the Braves at this point. Um, Atlanta, who lost today. Who the hell did – wait, who did Atlanta lose to? Gate? Who did Atlanta oh, – they lost oh. to Washington, 6-1. to one. Um, There was a – Kevin Biggio hit a big three-run home run, and the Blue Jays came from behind to defeat you – know, the, the Twins scored four runs in the first. They were up four runs before the Blue Jays even came to bat. And the Blue Jays came all the way back from a 6 to 1 deficit to win 7 to 6 which means nobody in the American League Central is above 500. But let's get down to brass tacks. Oh yeah. The early morning game. The Diamondbacks just were dead in the water to the Detroit Tigers and looked like and you know at this point I was going to say okay I'm doing the show with Miller today. They went on they took two out of three from Detroit. Four game winning streak was snapped. Still, they're looking pretty good. And then, who was was it, who was who got the big? It was Christian Walker, right? Who got the big hit for the uh, for the D backs? It was yeah. Uh, well, Walker. you had like yeah, you had like a string of guys. Carroll Walker and Perdomo all came through <laughs> in the ninth inning to get. But like Richard. Walker was down, they were down to their last strike, and yeah. Walker hit one down the line for a two run double. And uh, with that, how can we describe the? Arizona Diamondbacks. Oh, in one word, the answer backs because the D backs have the most comebacks in Major League Baseball, I believe, this season, and they showed it again. They're the most resilient team in Major League Baseball. It doesn't matter how many times you kick them down, they always find the, the, the way to pick themselves back up. And we saw it again on Sunday because they were down to their final two outs, and then they just started racking up run after run. Corbin Carroll had himself a series, started game one with two home runs, including a grand slam, had a huge two run shot to make it a one-run game in that ninth inning on Sunday before Christian Walker and Perdomo put the final touches on the lead and the victory. The D-backs are one of the hottest teams in Major League Baseball. They won 11 of their last 13 games. They have they are tied for the best record in the National League, and right now it feels damn good to be a D-backs fan. Well, And they have opened up a – they're up four games in the loss column over Los Angeles. Yeah. And, folks, just keep in mind, it's now mid-June. Yes, there's a lot of baseball to be played, but it's under 100 games that have to be played. We are eerily close to the midway point of the season. We're just a couple of weeks away from being the halfway mark of the season. And right now, the Diamondbacks are they're 15 games above 500. And they have a three-and-a-half game lead over Los Angeles right now. The Pirates are in first place by themselves. The Rangers are not only first place by themselves, they have a five-game lead over the Houston Astros. Oof. And the Tampa Bay Rays, are now look at the Orioles are still, the Orioles are on a four-game winning streak, and they're on pace to win 100 games, okay? And they are five and a half games behind Tampa Bay, who have won eight of their last 10 games. This is, yes, there's still a lot of baseball left to be played, but we're in mid-June right now. And you're starting to see if you are a Marlin fan or if you are a Diamondback fan, this is no, or if you're a Pirate fan, this is no longer, hey, we had a nice April. This is, hey, we are probably going to be above 500 when the 4th of July shows up, which is something that all of those fan bases would have signed off on. Yeah. Um, hey, Miller Thomas, congratulations for having the best team in the National League. Oh, um, here's you. a trivia question, though. All Trivia right. question for today is about one of the, well, one of the most fascinating figures in baseball history, I think, is Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson, who has not only the only person with over 1,000 stolen bases, he has 1,406 stolen bases. Um, if someone, I think it was like, I think I calculated, someone s stole 55 bases a year 
for I think it was for like 22 years, 55 bases every year, Ricky Henderson would still be the all-time stolen base king. I mean, okay. it's just okay. he's just no one else has a thousand. He has fourteen hundred. Between his first full season in the major leagues, nineteen eighty, and the nineteen ninety one season, between nineteen eighty and nineteen ninety one, Ricky Henderson led the American League in stolen bases every single year except one. Who is the the trivia question is this. First person to answer this, send it to Sully Baseball on Twitter or locked on MLB pods on Twitter, or leave it here in the comments. Who is the only player between 1980 and 1991 to lead the American League in stolen bases whose name was not Ricky Henderson? So fire that along here. Fire that as your trivia question. I know a bunch of you probably know it, so this is going to be the first one, first one to jump on it. So Miller Thomas, tell people where they can follow you. You can follow me on Twitter at Creator Thomas24 for my personal account. Look up Locked On Dimebacks on both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle, and please hit subscribe on the Locked On Dimebacks YouTube channel. And you can follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Doing a podcast with the man whose team has the best record in the National League. That's Miller Thomas. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. This has been. Another Locked on Dimex, Locked on MLB crossover. Let's fist pump and call it a week. Boom.